Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to talk about seeds versus clones and why I prefer one over the other. But first, before we get into today's video, if you wouldn't mind, please hit that subscribe button if you are new here to the channel. And for those of you that have already subscribed, thank you so much for your support. If you all wouldn't mind, please give this video a big thumbs up. So folks, this week on the farm, we've had a good amount of orders. I do appreciate the support. If you guys are interested in hemp flower, all that information is down in the description below. Go ahead and check it out. Our farm runs on that support, so I do appreciate any and all support for our farm. So folks, let's talk about hemp seeds versus hemp clones and why I prefer one over the other. It's pretty clear and the plants are in a perfect spot right now to show you why I prefer clones over seeds. Now this is something I've talked about in other videos about genetics and stuff like that but when it comes to growing hemp day to day in and out there's a lot of headaches there's a lot of stuff you got to worry about. One of the last things I want to worry about is the genetics of my plants. Now here's the thing there are reputable seed breeders out there and every now and then they still get a hot seed or they get a hot batch or something happens seeds are just too unpredictable they're great for hunting uh you know if you're looking for a beautiful plant and you're willing to put the money in to do all that testing but here's the thing guys we did a lot of testing last year we have our three strains that we carried over this year very happy, know what they're going to do, and I'm going to show you the consistency of those three strains versus the seeds that we've planted. Now, I've gotten some comments about the CBG, oh, well, some of them went in the flower and they're coming back. That would be true, except they never went in the flower. What could be happening is there's some sort of autoflower genetic that was recessed, which, you know, CBG is from an autoflower, and it's really struggling to just hey, stay in that veg. One of the plants, actually a few of the plants from that desert snow are just, they look awful. They look absolutely awful. And then some of them look absolutely gorgeous. That's the problem with seeds. The other problem is we have no idea what their ratio is going to be, how much CBD these things are going to produce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the seeds and I'm going to show you the three strains that we've cloned. We know what they're going to look like. We know they are going to look almost identical to the plants we had last year. And that is why clones are important. When you're starting out to keep your costs low, I would definitely go with clones. And they have to be from a reputable clone breeder. Now, here's the other thing about clones. They can just be totally crap too. They don't do them right or if you buy them from a sketchy person, you could end up with clones that aren't from the same mother plant and you can have a totally different outcome than what we will have here. So I'm not saying that clones are perfect. What I'm saying is the best thing you can do is do your own cloning, find your own mother plant, but unfortunately you have to go through the seed process and that's what we're gonna talk about today. How do you select that plant to push it to the next level, to get that testing, to clone it, to make a mother plant out of that seed. And that's what we're gonna look at today. And I'm gonna show you what not to pick out for a mother plant and what maybe you should be looking for. So let's head into the grow area. Let's check out the plants. Let me show you the clones and then let's go over to the seeds. and Let's talk about the variability that we are having with our seeds. So let's go take a look. Okay, so folks, so we're walking into the grow area, and here this first row is cherry wine. Look how uniform they all look. They look almost all identical, all planted at the same time, all about the same growth. Uh, they just look perfect. Uh, the biox are about the same. Uh, I had to replace that one so it's a little smaller, but look, they're all about the same. Now we're going to come over here and show you the seeds. And these are all clones from our mother plants that we selected last year. Now we come over here, look at this beautiful Desert Snow CBG. It is absolutely beautiful. This one over here, a little worried about, and let me show you why I'm worried about it. Although it looks nice, see these leaves? They look bad. 
and I've also started to see some signs that it could be a Hermie. So that's something I definitely want to watch out for. But look how beautiful that plant is. And then you look at this one. A little stringy, not terrible. And then you look at this thing. Look how awful this plant looks. And then right next to it, the same thing. Now people have said, oh, it went into flower. Well, it never did. And from the looks of it, these are both female plants. Uh, you can tell that they are showing signs of female. So not even Hermie. And then we've already shown this one before in contrast to the rest of them. But look how beautiful this plant is. So this one looks like that one. These two look the same. So much variability in this row. It's incredible. Now, these are seeds that we were given from another farmer. This is our Biox cross. Look how nice this one is. But look, this one's a short one. That one's about the same as that one. This one's a little taller than the other two. And then we got this guy at the end who's about the same as the other two. So, just a lot of variability. Then we come down here. And look, you got this guy's looking good. This is all seed start. This guy's having a little bit of a tough time. And then this guy has essentially stopped growing. And then look at this one, small. And then this one's doing okay. And then we come down here, we look, and we can see, having a tough time. So, but look at this one. Look how big this one is. So it's just, and these were all seeds were planted at the exact same time. So it just goes to show you how different these plants are. Now they're all big and they're beautiful and for this time of year they're doing very, very well. But unfortunately folks, I'm coming down to the decision of whether I want to invest money in testing every single one of these or I have to start getting rid of some of these. And unfortunately, the more logical thing to do would be to get rid of these two plants right here and then possibly that plant also keeping the plant that looks good but could potentially not be good uh as far as the genetics go when it comes to the cbd content so well actually these are cbg sorry so cbg content and you know maybe holding on to ones that look like this i think this one is probably on its way out it's still just struggling even though it looks okay it's making me really nervous um, and so that is the hard part about pheno hunting is you're going to have to eliminate plants because you can't test them all. It, it's just really difficult to get a consistent product. So that is the problem we are facing right now. So folks, those are the challenges, seeds versus clones. Now clones, again, if you have your own mother plants, you know what you're getting. When you buy clones, you can get some other stuff with them. We've talked about it in the past, but you can get bad soil, you can get new bugs, whole host of problems with clones, whole host of problems with seeds. It's a constant debate in the hemp world, which is better than what. I have personally decided that clones are my favorite. My own clones are by far my favorite thing to do. Now, when it comes to selecting what seeds to do, unfortunately, in the next few weeks, we're gonna have to start cutting plants. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to be replaced, doesn't mean that we're not gonna have plants in their spot, but what it means is we're gonna start narrowing down what CBG plants we're gonna be willing to fork up money to get those tested. And if they're not even growing good, there's no point in keeping those plants. Uh, when we're harvesting for a mother plant, when we get ready to start picking what plant we're going to bring to next season, it's got to grow good, first of all. It's got to provide a good amount of content, whether CBG or CBD. It's also got to have a really nice flower, good floral smell, good terpenes. There's a whole host of things that go into selecting a pheno. And this is just the first process. It's really heartbreaking too, because a lot of work goes into each and every one of those plants. But at the end of the day, it's a lot less expensive to start cutting than it is to start testing every plant. And so unfortunately, in the next few weeks, you will see some of those CBGs being cut. That's just the nature of it. Some people like to grow them out and see what they get. 
but here, because we're under restrictions, we have to abide by that 0.3 number. We can't take the risks that we have in the past when it comes to genetics. We have to be on the ball. And that is something that those plants make me very nervous about. Uh, so unfortunately, they will be getting the cut very, very soon. Um, but we are gonna replace them and we'll get into how we're gonna replace them. Um, but that is all I have for today's video, folks. Let me know what you think about seeds versus clones. Do you prefer one over the other? Do you enjoy the hunt for the pheno with the seeds? Some people really enjoy that. It's just not something I really enjoy doing because it makes me really nervous uh, because it's just with the restrictions that are on hemp right now, it's very, very, very nerve wracking uh, because one plant can mess up that whole thing. And it's just, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just not my thing. But anyway, let me know in the comments below what you like to do. And if you guys are interested in hemp flower, you know where to look down in the description below. Go ahead and check it out. Feel free to email me and, of course, drop a comment. You can always find me on Facebook and Instagram. And I will catch you guys in another video.